Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, babe, hit the subscribe button because you're gonna wanna stay. If you're returning, hey besties, it's so good to see you guys again. Um, are we back a week later for another meal prep? Yes. Yeah, I know I told you guys that I was going to be doing meal preps every other week, but you know what? I'm really challenging myself to make sure that I actually meal prep every single week. So you're gonna probably get one now every single week. I know this is the information that you wanted to hear. This is the content you want to see. So I'm going to give it to you. I'm really also challenging myself to make sure that I'm the healthiest version of myself. And I'm just, you know, I'm tired of talking about it. I want to be about it. So we're getting into it. We're getting to it. Okay. Your girl is really trying to be better. I don't know when it happened, but meal prepping stopped becoming fun after a while. Like I used to be like, so fun. I'm like, Ooh, let's throw this together. Let's do that. And then life just started lifing and it was like, Oh no, we're tired and DoorDash sounds pretty great. I mean, why meal prep when I could spend $93 on DoorDash, right? No, just me? Okay, noted. Anyway, you guys can pause through my disclaimer. You already know the drill. I'm giving you guys three super bomb, super quick and easy recipes to add to your meal plan. We're gonna spice it up and I'm using every shortcut I could use. Trader Joe's has been coming through for me lately and you'll see why, but just know that it's okay to take the shortcut. Don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. I lead a super busy lifestyle as a content creator and a teacher. Well, teacher first, content creator second, but still they're two full-time jobs. Realistically, I don't really have a lot of time to be spending in this kitchen. So I'm giving you three super quick and easy delicious recipes. And when I tell you delicious, I mean I'm giving you guys a breakfast because y'all know we're gonna be breakfast girlies. I'm, I'm really trying to get there this year, okay? I think that this is my year to become a breakfast girlie. And then I'm giving you a lunch and a dinner or maybe just two lunches or maybe two dinners or maybe all three you wanna eat for breakfast. Not sure, that's your business, not mine. Also, you'll be able to screenshot all of the recipes at the end of each meal that I prepare. I will also link it down below in the description box via a PDF file. Y'all loved that last time, so I think that's what we're gonna keep doing. I'll just keep providing the recipes down below in the description so if there's something that you want to see specifically, you want the directions, you want the recipe, it's all in that little cute document, okay? And make sure you look at it because I spent a lot of time on it. Not really, but kind of. Anyway, that's the intro. Let's hop into this meal prep. Are we ready for this breakfast? Because this is a game changer recipe, okay? Sweet peach filled baked oats. Come on, you didn't know that you needed it, but you do. Here's everything that you are going to need. Some oats, milk of choice. I used unsweetened almond milk. Of course, peaches, and I got the frozen kind because they're not in season. Some very ripe bananas, salt, cinnamon, honey, and we also need baking powder. I don't know why I forget ingredients, but we need that recipe at the end. So I'm gonna start by cooking down my peaches. I'm just putting them in a saute pan over medium high heat, adding a cup of water, and I'm just a allowing them to do what they do. In the meantime, I'm gonna go to my blender and make my batter. So I'm adding my oats, bananas, milk, cinnamon, a little bit of salt, vanilla, and the baking powder that I keep forgetting. I'm just gonna go ahead, pop the lid on, blend it up until it's nice and smooth. The longer the batter sits, the thicker the batter gets. So you might have to add just a little bit of almond milk or whatever milk you choose to thin it out. But really it just depends on how long you let it sit. Now I looked over at my peaches and they needed a little bit more liquid cause they weren't completely soft yet. So I added a little splash of 100% apple juice. You don't have to use that, water is fine, but I figured I only have a little bit left. Might as well just use it. While those are still cooking down on the stove, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up six little ramekins. These ramekins can be purchased from my Amazon storefront, which is linked down below in my description box. And we're just gonna fill up the ramekins halfway.
once my peaches were done, I took them off the heat and I allowed them to sit off the heat, I guess. For about 10 to 15 minutes, they were still a little bit warm, but some people have been warning me about cooking honey. I haven't done my own research yet, but I will, but I wanted to, you know, heed the warning. So I took the peaches off the heat, added some honey, a splash of vanilla, and some cinnamon, mixed it all in, and then I'm going to add a healthy couple of tablespoons of the peach filling into our ramekins, and then I'm going to top them off with the leftover batter. I ended up having a little bit more peaches and batter, so I made a seventh ramekin, which you'll see in a little bit. And then we're gonna put them on a baking sheet, pop them in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes. Initially, when I put these in the oven, I only tried to bake them for 25 minutes and the way they were still raw on the inside, it was an absolute no. So I actually went to about 40 to 45 minutes and they turned out beautiful. Look at them, we love a texture shot. These were so amazing. I wanna make these literally every week. You're gonna love them too. So definitely give them a try. So of course, you know, I'm gonna show you how I prepare them. This is like one of my most frequently asked questions, but how do I heat up my oatmeal, whether it's baked oatmeal or overnight oats? I just take it out of the fridge, pop it in the microwave for one to two minutes, and I just allow it to heat all the way through. This was actually day five, and I just wanted to show you guys how the oatmeal itself holds its integrity. So if you have questions about how long it holds up, this is day five oatmeal, and she was delicious. <music> All right, so moving on to our next meal. This salad has been so good and the dressing to go with it is even better. I'm making a roasted Brussels sprout and butternut squash salad with some couscous and a lemony Dijon dressing. I mean, are we drooling? Are we drooling yet? Because it's delicious. All right, so I'm gonna take some butternut squash and some frozen Brussels sprouts because realistically, I just can't commit to all this, you know, labor intensive meal prepping. So we're using any shortcut we can find. And I'm just going to season them to my liking. Remember, PDF in my description box for the recipes. You'll also be able to screenshot it at the end of each recipe. So I'm seasoning up really, really well my butternut squash and the Brussels sprouts, adding a little bit of olive oil on them, which you can definitely omit. I just like them to have a little bit of moisture. And then we're popping them right into the air fryer for about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how chunky the butternut squash is. Mine needed a little bit longer and we're gonna cook them at 400 degrees. Then I'm gonna move on to some couscous. I feel like couscous is very slept on, but I'm just gonna prepare it just like the box says. I picked mine up from Trader Joe's because Trader Joe's is literally my favorite and I just love going there now. Um, So I'm just adding a few seasonings. You don't have to do this part, but I like to season everything. So again, season to your liking and then you're just going to saute it on the stove and let it get brown and toasty. It definitely enhances the flavor so give it a try. Okay, so hear me out. I'm about to flake this up and it looks kind of hard and crusty and that's because it is. I didn't add enough water. So please don't be like me and actually read the box entirely. So I just added more later on and I just let it sit in there and it absorbed fine and it was completely soft and fluffy, super good. The timer on my air fryer went off so I took out the Brussels sprouts and butternut squash, let them cool. And now I'm just preparing to get into this super dreamy and delicious salad dressing. Dressing. Who knew what a little bit of mustard and lemon juice could do for you, but you'll never go back, okay? So I'm gonna add the juice of two lemons into a mason jar with a little bit of olive oil, you know, just a regular base for salad dressing. Of course, we're gonna follow up with some garlic, and I love this Grey Poupon. I think that's how you say it. 
Dijon mustard. It's so good. Like I feel fancy and bougie when I eat it. And then I'm adding my seasonings of choice. Again, you already know where you can find the recipe and shake it up until it is completely combined. I'm trying so hard not to like drool right now, just like thinking about it. It was that good. Also, I usually like to add some honey to my salad dressings just to balance off that tartness, that really sourness from the lemon. But I was fasting during this time and I couldn't actually have it. So I didn't add it and I didn't miss it at all. Then just to assemble the salad, you have some salad greens. I used baby kale, which is also from Trader Joe's. Topped it off with some cucumbers because I had some left over. The couscous, roasted veggies, a little bit of dried blueberries, and of course the salad dressing. And when I tell you the salad was a 30 million out of 10, it was just that sis. Don't take my word for it. Go make it. <laughs> Okay, I feel like I have hit a new level of lazy or maybe not even lazy. I'm just working smarter, not harder. So I wanted to try the carne asada. So the chicken and the steak asadas, I think they are from Trader Joe's. They're already pre-seasoned. I'm also using some frozen prepared rice. The only thing I'm really going to be doing here is microwaving and just throwing stuff in a skillet and barely cooking realistically. Um, this is amazing. I am making some steak and chicken rice bowls. They're kind of supposed to be like chipotle inspired bowls and i just didn't feel like really doing too much so i'm popping a bag of frozen rice in the microwave letting it do its thing and then i'm going to pour the contents of the steak package into the pan and just allow it to do its thing while that's cooking i'm making the quickest and i mean quick maybe like eight minutes maximum with all the chopping but i'm making the quickest pico de gallo you've seen me make it a million times <laughs> In the middle of me chopping up all of my pico ingredients, it was time to flip the steak. I personally should have let this cook longer on the second side, it was a little bit tough, but nonetheless, the flavor is exquisite. If you guys have never tried these, definitely go get you one because it just saves you all of the ingredients and time of having to season meat. Anyway, back to my pico, I'm just going to be chopping up my tomatoes, which were almost too soft. <laughs> uh, they were in the back of my fridge and I was like, I might as well just use these, so let's use them up. So. I'm just gonna be chopping the rest of my veggies and then once it's time to take the steak from out of the pan I'm just gonna give it a couple of flips make sure that it's good to go and then I'm gonna place it in a bowl so that it can cool off and let all the juices redistribute throughout the meat <laughs> Then I'm gonna clean out that very same pan and then I'm going to put the contents of the chicken asada package in there and I'm gonna let it do its thing. Y'all know we don't eat pink chicken, so please cook it thoroughly. Like, don't make me say it, okay? Don't make me have to keep reminding you, we don't eat pink chicken. Now that the chicken is cooking, I'm going to assemble my pico. So I'm adding the tomatoes, red onions, cilantro, a little bit of jalapenos, and then my seasonings of choice, which are my basic seasonings, just salt, pepper, garlic powder, some minced garlic, Garlic and I believe cumin and then you know it's not pico without the lemon juice so we're gonna add that mix it all together pop it in a little container and that's really it pico is like a 10 out of 10 food it's so low in calorie and it tastes delicious on everything <music> Now we're flipping the chicken and it looks kind of dark, but that's okay, I like it. At least we know that it's cooked. And then I'm gonna go ahead and quickly slice up my meat. One of these pieces was actually so red on the inside, I almost gagged. I was like, you know what? Put it back in the pan, <laughs> put it back in the pan. And then I'm going to cut my chicken. The chicken is cooked all the way through. This meat was actually super, super good and it held up really well in the fridge for five days. <laughs> So 
now I'm gonna go ahead in here and just assemble my bowls. Half of them are getting chicken, half of them are getting steak, and then I'm using a little bit of rice. And that's really it. I'm not adding any of my cold ingredients to these glass containers since it's just easier to heat this food up and then transfer it into a white bowl and just leave all my cold ingredients, you know, on the white bowl. But anyway, I'm gonna show you how to assemble it and that is this meal. Like, are you joking? Do you see how good this bowl looks? Yeah, don't sleep on it. Definitely take the shortcut and try this recipe. This is gonna conclude this week's meal prep. If you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Also be sure to turn on your post notifications. That way you can be notified every time your girl drops a new video. And until next time, babes, I'll see you in my next. Mm -hmm.